Hello, Internet! I'm Elliot the Purple Haired Doofus, and welcome back to Ready Player One. We're covering three chapters today, so let's uh, blast right through this. Why three chapters? Because I am so close to finishing this book. You're gonna see me in this shirt for last video, this video, and next video too. <laughs> Cause, yeah, we're finishing this book right now. This video will cover chapter 0034, 0035, and 0036. Chapter 0034 is basically the setup of the battle itself. It discusses how Wade uses Leopardon, the giant robot that he acquired when he defeated Black Tiger. After he's finished describing Leopardon and starting to go into the actual battlefield, he starts pining after Artemis again, and I just kind of want to slap him and say, you know, get in the game! <laughs> Ice on the prize, buddy! He sees a lot of ships trying to go through the barrier before noon, and they're all just zapping away like flies on a bug zapper. That is literally how it's described in the book, and I thought it was such a, a vivid scene that I kept it in there. It starts discussing all of the other giant robots that everyone else chose when they defeated the Black Tiger, and it references a whole bunch of giant robot anime that I do not know about. Uh, so I'm not even going to try and name them, because I have no idea what they're about. If you do, and you want to mention that in the comments, that's great. If you want to tell me that I should have watched those, that's great too, because I'm just starting to get into anime. They take all their giant robots and they're surrounding the Castle Anorak with the orb-like shield around it. And Sorrento walks out. And as soon as he walks out, I get the instant thought in my head that he has that bomb that kills everything on a planet. And he's going to use it right now, where everyone's around him. And I'm just like, shit, don't do it. Don't do it, Sorrento! You're better than this! No, you're not, but still, I want you to be better than this! He pulls out his giant robot thing, and he calls it to action, and it's the Mecha Godzilla, which is nearly indestructible. And as soon as he activates Mecha Godzilla, it gets to be about three minutes until noon. It describes Wade's plan to take down the orb shield going into action with one of the droids actually going in and enacting his plan that he programmed into the droid. And then it goes on to chapter 0035. Noon hits, the shield goes down, and Wade thinks that maybe 10% of the Gunters are going to attack. What he doesn't account for is when all of the Gunters attack. <laughs> and it's this amazing battle between all of the robots, all of the ships in the air, all of the Sixers around, everyone just goes for the entrance. Everyone goes for the entrance, and Wade is sitting there in his robot, and all of these tiny little f ships are floating around, and he's trying not to hurt them, trying not to attack them, but they're all in the way. What are you going to do? Sorrento attacks, trying to take Shoto, Parsifal, Artemis, and H down, and takes down a whole bunch of Sixers in the process, taking down his own men because the Mecha Godzilla is so powerful. The one thing that I didn't really like about this chapter was Wade knows that H is a girl. He even mentions it in the line, he says, I'm not going to refer to H as a girl, I'm going to refer to H as a guy, like I had the entire time, the, the entire book. And it really made me feel uneasy because it made it feel like the author wrote this chapter first and rather than to go in and change all the he's to she's to make it flow better he just adds in that one line and it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way all four of their giant robots are waiting at the entrance of the castle and the only thing between them and getting to the castle is Sorrento. and wade says i have a plan I'll distract Sorrento while you three go into the castle, then you can open up the gate. And Shoto says, that's a brilliant plan, and he attacks the Mecha Godzilla, while uh, H, Parsifal, and Artemis all go in while Shoto's attacking. And then I find out that it wasn't Shoto's plan to merely distract Sorrento. He was exacting his revenge that he told Parsifal was his quest once Dioto died. And I'm like, yes, Shoto, go for your quest. Get your goal. Do what you came here to do in the first place, which wasn't exactly get the egg, but to just kick Sorrento's ass. The other three get to the entrance. H and Artemis instantly go inside. Parsifal stops, and he turns around, and he sees Shoto struggling 
with Saranto. And he's trying to yell after Shoto, you know, we're in, come in after us. And Shoto's just like, no, 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 you you go in, I'll, I'll be in soon. Shoto takes these giant swords and he slices into the Mecha Godzilla. And it's amazing. It's an amazing scene. That's when Parsifal's like, okay, you've wounded him. You've practically ripped off his arm. You can come in now. And Shoto's like, no, I'm not done yet. I need my revenge. And Saranto kills him. Parsifal just loses it at this point. And he says, you know what? This asshole has killed my aunt, a whole bunch of my neighbors, including Mrs. G, who was never hurt a soul. He's destroyed my life. I am going to kick this guy's fucking ass and there's nothing anyone can do to stop me. And the other two are in, in the castle near the crystal gate going, dude, come on, <laughs> let's do this. And he's like, hold on. Parsifal goes after the Mechagodzilla and the Mechagodzilla destroys his ship. And so it's just his tiny little avatar standing there at the entrance of Castle Anorak. So he pulls out his beta capsule and he becomes Ultraman to take down the Mechagodzilla. The other two are still at the Crystal Gate going, come on dude, what's the holdup? Parsifal just rips in to the Mechagodzilla, tosses him onto his back, and Sorrento does his whole escape pod thing, which is just the Mechagodzilla head floating away, and... Parsifal uses the Ultraman cross to shoot down the, the head and he sees Sorrento's ID number erase off of the scoreboard, meaning that he has been removed from the game. And it's an amazing scene. And then he shrinks back down to Avatar size and goes to the Crystal Gate. The three there are sitting there wondering exactly how they are supposed to open this gate. As soon as he says, you know, Sorrento's dead, I'm thinking it really can't be that easy. He's got to have something up his sleeve. Wade runs to the girls. All three of them are trying to figure out how to do it. And then they remember the words and how the words mean the Schoolhouse Rock song. And so they all say aloud, three is the magic number. And the one lock turns into three locks. And they each take their crystal keys and they insert it and unlock the door. And it opens up to this beautiful crystal gate and they're about to walk through the door when there's this blinding white flash and they die. That's how 0035 ends. 0036 begins with Wade waking up to the words, you have an extra life. And it's like, ha, huh, lucky fucking bastard. And he got the extra life because of the Pac-Man game that he played, where he got the quarter that was stuck on there and he played the perfect game of Pac-Man. The quarter could not be removed from his inventory because it was him. If he died, that's when the quarter became active and gave him the extra life. He pulls out the quarter eventually, now that it's been used and it's dead, and he just kind of tosses it aside. But when he wakes up, he's at the bottom of this huge cube-like crater, and high above him is the door just floating out in the ether. And he's like, I don't know how to get up there. And then he hears these ambient voices of Artemis and H and Shoto. They're all talking to him, and he's like, how can you be talking to me? You're all dead, right? They're like, Ogden let us link into your comm link so that we could talk to you. We could help you to defeat this, to end this. Parsifal sees some glimmering in one, in one of the corners of the crater and he runs to it and it's his beta capsule. And he's like, oh yes! And he's like, I'm going to become Ultraman! And he slaps it and nothing happens because you can't become Ultraman more than once a day. All of his pals are telling him you have to hurry because there's 20 other Sixers that are still active. Because what happened, how they all died, was the catalyst, the big bomb of bombs that I was telling you earlier in this video was used. And everyone around the planet obliterated. So they had 20 Sixers on reserve far away from the planet. And they're on their way now to go through the crystal gate that has just been opened by the three that they killed. What fucking bastards! 
Once the beta capsule doesn't work, Artemis says, you know, my chucks will help you fly. And so Parsifal looks around for these chucks that were dropped when Artemis died. And he picks them up and he puts them on and he floats up to the doorway and he says, you know what? I want to split the money with all of you. And they're like, what? What are you talking about? And he's like, I wouldn't be able to get here or I wouldn't be able to do this if it weren't for you. So I'm going to split the money with all of you when I get the Easter egg. But I need you. I need you all to help me because I'm only going to get one shot at this before the Sixers come and come through this doorway now that they know how to open it. And I need to get to that Easter egg first. Are you in? And the three of them are just kind of like, would we get the money anyways? And he's like, of course you would get the money anyways. The money is yours whether you help me in there or not because I would not be able to get this far without you. And Artemis says, can we get that in writing? And Parsifal opens up his broadcast channel and he says, look, I'm about to get this Easter egg mofo and, you know, I want to split up the money with my friends, Shoto, Artemis, and H. And if I don't do that, you can all call me a flating sixer if you want. And it's just, ah, you hurt my heart in the best way, Ernest Klein. And then he goes through the door. And if you want to find out what happens next, you'll either have to read or wait until tomorrow's video. I'm going to read it as soon as I'm done recording this, but you'll have to wait. Today's question, since there are a couple moments in these chapters that were about revenge, uh, Shoto getting revenge on Sorrento for killing Dayato, and Parsifal getting revenge on Sorrento for just fucking up his life. I want to know, would you go after revenge or would you have gone after your goal and then gone back and gone for revenge? Let's take it on back to yesterday's question, which was, have you ever met anyone from the internet without knowing what they look like? Yes, I've met quite a few people from the internet without knowing what they look like. It's kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes, most of the time, it's fantastic. It's less and less now with Facebook and Instagram and everything like that, but before when I only met people through message boards and it was just text on a screen, it was different. But now that everyone has a picture on Instagram or Facebook that I can look at before I see them, or they're on YouTube where I can see their videos, it's not the same. I don't have to worry about that anymore. But I believe I've rambled on enough, and plus, I really, really want to, really want to get back to those final three chapters. And I will be reviewing all three of them tomorrow. Do not forget that next week we begin our new book, The Seventh Bride by T. Kingfisher. Go out, grab it by any legal means necessary. Borrow it from a friend, rent it from a library, buy it at a bookstore. Just do it so that you can read it with me, read it before I spoil it, or do whatever you want to do with it before I ruin everything for you. I have been the Purple Haired Davis reminding you to watch your pajama radius, and I will see you all in the final chapters of Ready Player One. Toodles!